Y'all sit back and enjoy the light show. Y'all sit back and enjoy the light show. Welcome, Seeker of Truth. You've found your way into Innerverse. My name is Chance, and I'm your host on this podcast where, by speaking to incredibly unique, incredibly gifted, spiritual individuals, we will uncover new solutions and methodologies for creating the lives that we know that we want, deserve, and that the earth can actually accept and keep us here in a sustainable way. If this is your first time finding the show, Please be aware that you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or YouTube. This week's music is brought to you by MetaWave, an act from Colorado. If you want to check out their SoundCloud, just go to the full episode description and scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see links there. Thanks, MetaWave, for making this awesome music and letting me share it. I'll just turn it up now. Y'all sit back and enjoy the light show. Enjoy the light show. Enjoy the light show. People, let me tell you, this is a great episode. There is information in this episode that could actually change your life for a positive benefit for all time. And normally I wouldn't just be trying to promote products on this show. It's not really the intent of the show to promote products per se. But Amy, the creator of the Opa Tooth Bar product that we are going to discuss in depth during this episode, along with my wife and co-host Haley, The Tooth Bar is a product that has actually affected my life in a positive way. And that is why I reached out to her and wanted to do a podcast because it's remarkable when somebody invents something that helps other people and their purpose for doing it is actually to help other people. And that's what Amy's doing here. The uh, product is extremely well priced. Like, so what it is is a tooth bar. Uh, just to jump ahead a little bit, and it's soap instead of toothpaste. And we go into a lot of discussion about why that's better than toothpaste. And But beyond just that, our talk was pretty spiritual and deep. So if you want to jump straight to it, I don't blame you. Just fast forward or skip ahead until you hear some female voices, and then you'll know you're there. But don't skip ahead just yet. I'm going to give you some valuable info. Go ahead and go to opabox.com, which is the website that Amy's got going. And if you happen to see a product there that seems like you would like it and you're going to buy it, use the coupon code OPA, O-P-A, just like that. And you'll get 10% off. Thank you, Amy, for putting this together, doing this podcast episode with me and Haley and for inventing the OPA bar. Now, as I mentioned last week, I'm going to continue with my intention to make this show a little bit more informative and useful to somebody that Uh, is listening. So to that end, I'm going to give you guys a brief rundown of something I'm sure you've all heard of. And some of you may roll your eyes. Some of you may be already locked in with this information. You don't need to hear it. But what that is, is the chakra systems. If you've been around for the last 10 years during the new age deluge, I'm sure you've heard of chakras. But you might not actually have ever done the, uh, the research to find out what they are or been exposed enough to the concepts to really get the meaning behind the system. So I wanted to give you just a quick rundown of what chakras are, what they symbolize, and why it's actually a useful thing to have as a conceptualization. Chakras are 
supposed to be energy vortexes or energy centers that run up your body in a column and they uh starting at the root chakra which is at the base of your spine to going just above your head um, or the crown of your head and each one of these seven energy centers that we call chakras it represents a different aspect of your consciousness as a human being and why it's useful to have a symbol structure like this is you can look at the chakra system and study it and you're able to actually determine in what ways you're not fulfilling your potential as a human being or you might be able to figure out ways that you could uh, address behavior issues that you're experiencing that you're, you feel out of control with because each of these seven chakras dictates a different part of the human expression and whether the chakra is closed or maybe overactive that is what um, symbolize, is symbolized whenever you're talking about different behavioral problems or health problems. So, the root chakra is the first one. It is associated with the color red. It is located at the base of your spine or the pelvic floor. And the root chakra is essentially your grounded belonging in the world feeling, your ability to trust and feel independent. And literally, it's like whether or not you feel alive. So basically, if you're experiencing health problems, a lot of times physical health problems can be addressed by practices that are supposed to help the root chakra. The next chakra is the sacral chakra, which is like the creative aspect of the human being. It's associated with the color orange, and it's located in your sacrum and pelvis area, so your junk. Your, <laughs> you, you know, that's your baby-making equipment, and that's why it's associated with creative force, but uh, the actual person will be energized in their root chakra um, by their friendliness, their good mood, playfulness, and it's sort of the primary grounds for creative expression, whether or not your sacral chakra is working correctly. Um, and another thing about the chakra is if, the, if there's one at the bottom that is blocked off, a lot of times and then everything above it is also blocked off. So if your root chakra is really out of whack, like you're physically sick all the time, then you're not going to feel very creative which is the next chakra up. Now, after that, you have the solar plexus chakra, which is associated with the color yellow and located in your chest, your solar plexus. This is uh, your respect for yourself and others and your confidence and your ability to stay calm and solve problems. It's sort of like um, your sovereignty in the physical world, you could say. The next chakra is the one that is possibly the most important to be open and that's the heart chakra and the reason why you really need that one open is it's right in the middle of this system it's your center of your being and if you're in that spot then you're balanced between your higher and lower natures the heart chakra is connected to your ability to feel love and to be loving and it's literally what allows you to have empathy for others so if you find yourself completely um unable to even feel what other people are feeling <laughs> that you know, that is a heart chakra problem. Um, it's sort of like your emotional center in a way. You, I would even go so far as to say that a big part of the reason why we come to Earth as human beings is to learn about the heart chakra and to express it. Because I forgot to mention, the color green is the associated color with this chakra. And if you look around on this planet, what's the most popular color that you're going to see? Well, if you're not in a city, that is. It's probably going to be green or blue, I suppose. And blue is another huge aspect of why we're here. Blue being the throat chakra, the next one up. That's obviously in your mouth and in your throat. And the throat chakra is what allows you to speak the truth. And it's also a big part of your creative ability. Whereas the sacral chakra is more of a physical creativity and playfulness and uh, maybe inner child nature. The throat chakra that's where you're getting into some serious creative manifestations where you're expressing your actual true self. Now, I might be seen as someone who has an overactive throat chakra, seeing as how I speak so much. Hopefully, I'm not boring, though. Um, and, you know, it's, I think, better to be overactive in this chakra than to be underactive because underactive would mean you're afraid to speak at all and you'd be kind of timid and probably a dependent type of individual because you're not able to express yourself. The next chakra is the third eye chakra, which is associated with 
the color purple and they also call it the brow chakra and that is the pineal gland in the in the brain which is a spot in the middle of the brain kind of right in the middle of the forehead and skull where supposedly the um mystical chemical known as dmt is produced which is what allows us to dream and also reach transcendent states of consciousness possibly now the third eye chakra is completely connected with your intuitive abilities and it allows one to see with their eyes closed. So if you can actually like close your eyes and imagine and visualize something really vividly, that's probably a sign that your third eye chakra is working well. If you can't do that, then you might actually need to do something to open up your third eye. And that's an entire different can of worms. And I'm probably going to get into that on a future um, episode. And I'm sure it'll come up just throughout this episode um, when I'm talking to Amy about the third eye and about pineal gland and about fluoride, which is something that's in toothpaste. And it's a neurotoxin that actually blocks that gland, calcifies the pineal gland in your brain, and therefore is a guaranteed third eye killer and closer. Hmm, why is that in the water supply? Anyway, we talk about that in the episode. <laughs> so the final chakra is the crown chakra, and that can be seen as right at the top of the head. It is a pinkish purple color. It is your true connection to your own source. It allows you to be, whenever you're in the crown chakra, you have sovereignty over yourself and you become a true individual at that point because you are expressing your full, fully manifested energetic self. The individual, that word actual, me, the actual meaning of the word individual is cannot be divided one that cannot be divided so once you're up in your crown chakra and actually open and balanced there you cannot be dual you're in unity consciousness and that means your thoughts your words and your actions are all in line with each other because mm -hmm. if you can't act the way that you think or you feel something and you're not able to act on it or say something about how you feel that all represents being divided and dual. But once you're all the way up to the crown chakra and fully balanced, it's a joyful, mm -hmm. sovereign feeling. That's where wisdom and compassion come from. Um, but you can be overactive in this as well, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm probably overactive here. I'm addicted to spirituality, you might say. I don't think I have a too large of a craving for attention. I mean, I do do a podcast, but Maybe it is for attention. I don't know. Somebody psychoanalyze me. I don't mind. So anyway, that's a quick overview of the chakras. One more from the top. You have root chakra red connected with physical security and health in the world. And it's in the base of the spine. Then you have the sacral chakra, which is orange. That is the creative energy. It is located in the pelvis. Then you have the solar plexus chakra, which is yellow. And that's in your chest. And that is your ability to act in the world. And the heart chakra is obviously right there in your heart and is green. And it represents your ability to love and feel empathy. The throat chakra is blue and it's in your throat and allows you to express yourself and speak truth in a creative way. And then you have the third eye chakra right there in the middle of your forehead, which is colored purple. It's your intuitive abilities, allowing you to know one's purpose and also see the world beyond the world and to be able to visualize with your eyes closed. And finally, the crown chakra at the top of the head, pink purple color, connection to the source or God, whatever it is that you call that. It is your individuality, your sovereignty, your joy, and your spirituality. Crown chakra is pretty important. So anyway, I hope that that was a helpful overview for someone that might not have really had it explained to them before. And we're going to be talking about chakras in the episode. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody was at least in a similar place as far as being able to understand what I'm talking about whenever I do talk about chakras in future episodes too. And if this sounds like an interesting symbol structure, I do recommend studying it because you can look at your own uh, personal expression and your own daily habits in conjunction with uh, these chakras and start to possibly devise and research exercises, medicines, and other abilities that we have as humans to bring ourselves into balance in all these seven aspects of our expression of self. 
And remember, you can check the episode full description for links to everything I talk about in any episode, and I will link some links to visual aids and information related to the chakras. Now that that's all taken care of and explained, we'll get to the episode with Amy. But first, a little bit of quick business. It's good business, I promise. Back in Season 2, Episode 24 of the podcast, I spoke to a fantastic individual, definitely emanating a lot of energy from the heart chakra, named Yura Soul. And Yura Soul has created a free speech and heart-centered social media platform where the users are all there to share information with each other in an honest and loving way, in a non-violent way. So it's pretty cool. The reason I'm bringing it up is because I'm doing a contest from now until the middle of June where if you sign up to Eureka or you return to the website if you've already got an account and you make a post that tags Interverse, you'll be eligible to win the contest, which the prize will be sort of a mystery box, but I guarantee it will include original artwork from me, a Eureka t-shirt, and some crystals, and probably more stuff than I can get in there too, but... You know, nothing that you don't want, hopefully. All cool stuff. And all you got to do is go to eureka.org and make a profile and make a post that tags Interverse. And I really hope to see more of you doing this because not very many people have yet, I'll be completely honest. So if you go jump on this right now, you might win a box of loot. And hopefully maybe that's a good way of enticing you there that will lead you to actually realize what a cool thing it is and how much potential it has for being a tool for delivering truth information to other people. So hopefully I'll see you on Eureka. Check the episode links in the description and you'll find your way to the contest. The other thing that you can find in the episode description links is a link to my Patreon page. If you go there and pledge $1, $3, $5 to the show, you'll get all kinds of exclusive content related to my artwork, and uh, videos of episodes that you can't otherwise access, older episodes that are no longer online. And really, even if none of that is that interesting to you, I still think it would be really awesome if you could donate a dollar to my show because that's the only way that it gets any kind of financial support. It's just listeners. That's it. There's no other method that I can make money off this. I'm not ever going to be taking on advertisers and even though this show might seem like an advertisement on this episode because I'm talking to someone that's got a product I uh, trust me it's not the case Amy's not paying me to talk up her product I literally just love it and think it's incredible and I think it would change your life for the better if you got it but anyway um, it would change my life for the better if you could pledge a dollar or more to the show because that is what allow me to get new equipment I really need a new computer soon I'll be able to get merch and stuff for um, the subscribers like t-shirts and better stickers and you know just in general it's an energetic symbol that you think that this show should exist and continue to be a thing so so that's enough asking for money and we will talk to amy savanas now this is a good one thanks for listening i love you and remember if you like this show it can't hurt to share it with somebody else Everybody, welcome, my new friend to the podcast, Amy. Say your last name for me. Savinus. And actually, you don't even have to get too close to the mic. I have it uh, to where you can sit back and be comfy. Nice. Anywhere in that range, you're gonna be fine. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I finally got my studio reconfigured thanks to my intelligent audio engineer trained wife Haley, who has actually joined with us today. That's me. My first time bringing her into co-host, but you didn't want to introduce me to Amy, so I thought you could tell that story, actually, and we can talk about what Amy even does. 
Well, as far as Amy and I meeting, there's not a whole lot to tell other than I used to work at a natural market called Mama Jeans here in Springfield. And I saw her come in several times and I was like, oh, look at that beautiful, shiny lady. And then we ended up <laughs> talking and um, she told me about her Opa bars, which uh, she can explain better, but they're amazing. She told me about her Opa bars and then I ended up doing a little promotional video for those. And it was a lot of fun and we've just been friends ever since. That's about right. <laughs> we'll uh, link that video that we're talking about in the episode description. Definitely look at that. It's a super cool commercial. Usually commercials are like, oh, I hate this. Why are you trying to sell me something? But with the Opa bar, which we're going to explain in a second, the commercial, if you pause and go watch this commercial, it'll explain to you really well what the what this is and uh, what Opa bars are about. And it's interesting as a commercial because you're like learning something, learning the technique of how to use it in the commercial. And that's fun. Um, what the Opa bar has done for me is make my <laughs> teeth dramatically healthier. And I'll go into that. And um, whiter. If I do add something about that, your teeth look a lot whiter since when I first met you since, well, not since I first met you, but since you started using the turmeric Opa bar, your teeth look a lot whiter. So tell us about your product and how it got started and why you're doing it. Sure thing. Okay, so initially it all started with the body bars because of having major sensitivities to a lot of things with myself. And I figured if it's something that I create that I can utilize, I'm sure a lot of other people can that have sensitivities. And then and uh, body bars are an all natural type of product that is for just like uh, showering with cream. like head to toe. You can shave with it. You can clean your face. You can clean your body. You can even wash your hair with it if you wanted to as well. So you're using stuff like um, natural oils. Absolutely. And we've even geared into having it to where it's made with all organic and uh, wild crafted oils. Oh. So, yeah. So you're you're getting all the great benefits that those individual ingredients are known for. You know, we have our little saying, we can't say it heals, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not making any statements here, but we like to say, you know, one try and you'll see why. I mean, it all it takes is the experience. And Can I'd you say explain what wild crafted means. Wild crafted is in a sense you're organic, but in a wild sense where they don't do they have the whole area where there's not gonna be any dump off or any pollution or chemicals that get to that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you'll see it in other countries where it's like untapped. Whereas, you know, in the States here, there's a lot of areas where that'd be a little hard to do. You have to really make it a point to block it off. And so then there's also the organic and there's the fine line on people saying which is better organic or wild crafted. But in a sense, I like to say they're very similar. So for the most part, all of the uh, oils are organic that are used to create the Opa bars and the Opa tooth bars. We do have some like the, the ginger and the ginger mint. That's going to be your wild crafted. And then like the frankincense and the myrrh. And that also helps too um, with additional benefits if you're not already familiar with it. I know you guys probably are, but as the audience, it's definitely worth looking into because everything that was created is not just, oh, let's make it smell good. I mean, it's it's for a reason to help with the health and well-being as far as what those individual ingredients stand for. That's what's so cool about the Opa tooth bars, which actually that's the only product I've used. I haven't tried your regular bars, but now I'm interested. I didn't even, I guess I wasn't even aware of it. So we're, we're raising awareness with this podcast already. <laughs> um, but what, what I uh, have experienced with the two types of open tooth bars that we have purchased would be um, one was a minty, uh, minty jam. And that just totally keeps your breath fresher than regular toothpaste. Uh, essential oils do a great job of that um, and it's not overpowering in the mintiness whereas a lot of toothpaste whenever you get uh, put it into your tongue you just are like burning from the maybe from the mint maybe from some other chemicals going on who knows but <laughs> I just right? remember the burn of, uh, of really minty toothpaste in the past and although this is a minty flavor it it is a more longer lasting and um, less harsh minty flavor but what I'm more excited about is the ginger turmeric bar that I've used because on that one, I've really noticed a change in my teeth uh, whiteness level. And I've had an issue with that since I was a kid because, <laughs> oh, this is great. 
whenever I was a kid. Nobody taught me how to even. I guess if they taught me how to deal with with toothbrush, uh, toothpaste, I I didn't listen, which is very possible. But I'm pretty sure nobody told me not to swallow it because I was really interested in swallowing toothpaste as a little kid. And after I lost my um, baby teeth and permanent teeth started coming in because of, I guess because of that high fluoride consumption of swallowing toothpaste, which is also, that's a whole nother topic, by the way. Oh, yes. I I ended up with spotty teeth and my teeth came in literally different shades. And uh, it still to this day looks like I have weird stains on my teeth when in reality they just came in multicolored like that and patchwork. And anyway, um, what has really not helped the situation is that I've had a pretty long time coffee habit that I recently kicked. And then for a time I was doing really stupid shit like smoking cigarettes. And then I was vaporizing uh, nicotine, also retarded. And sorry if you do that, it's retarded. And <laughs> um, I, anyway, I, I really did experience a lot of tooth staining. And every time I go to my dentist, they'd be like, well, your gums are a little further receded. Well, your teeth are a little more stained. We're doing our best here, but it's a losing battle. And it's not like I never brush my teeth. Maybe not the best habits ever. But uh, since I've been using the tooth bar, I'm actually more... The way it makes your mouth feel afterwards, it feels good. It's like a little tingly good feeling. And that actually motivates me to want to brush my teeth more. That and With no film. No film. Yeah, that's a really great Right, point. right. We're not coating the teeth. We're actually cleaning them. And that's a good point, too, is that with toothpaste, any toothpaste, any toothpaste, it can take up to 27 rinses to get off of your teeth. <gasps> wow. Yeah. And with that soap base, like your tooth soap, like what we're talking about here with the open tooth bar, is maybe a few rinses, two or three at max. And then it's rinsed off. And, you know, it's funny because not in like a, oh, that's hilarious kind of way, but more of an odd funny where when I was younger, back when I used to use toothpaste, which I haven't in over five years, brush my teeth with toothpaste. That's right. I just use it to open tooth bar, but I would clench my teeth and like, like uh, tap my teeth together. And it's almost like they were tacky together. And I'm like, what is going I don't on? Know what you're talking about. It was the toothpaste. Oh, yes. And when it has fluoride in it too, it's just cramming all that, not only coating your teeth, but cramming it in your gums and everything in your mouth, everything that goes in your gums. I mean, that's going in through your whole body. Your actual teeth have roots and have things that actually go through your whole body. And it's just like, wow, you know, no wonder. Yeah, they're connected to your nervous system, which is a direct line that goes across your entire body. um, Whatever you want to call it, lines of energy or uh, the whole networking network of information. And like that. And on top of that, the the fluoride question is something that anyone that's looked into, I guess you could call it conspiracy theories, but it's really just conspiracy fact. Fluoride connection is one that's really deep and. Um, revealing as to the nature of this thing that we call the government and big corporate America. And the true nature of this thing, and unfortunate if you want to be in denial about this and it's going to bother you that I say this, but the true nature of stuff like the toothpaste industry, even in general from the big companies like Crest or whatever, a lot of that developed straight out of World War II. World War II, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Well, think about it. Nazi Germany, Right. that being said, not just... It migrated here from there. They were the ones industrializing this kind of crazy chemical shit and injecting it into their society. And then that that trend moved here after World War II. It's it's true. Look it up. Ration, uh, rationing was kind of an excuse um, for why these things were used, like all these weird chemicals and and products, why they were used. And it was like, oh, well, we have this junk left over. We have some DDT. Let's just spray it. We have some... Some of these weird oils. Let's make uh, let's make margarine. Let's make margarine. That'll be cheaper, and we can say it's for rationing purposes. But it's it was crazy. What right. you've done though is the example of what was a normal human capacity before World War II, and this started to change. Which is there was something that you needed, and so you made it. Right, right. And here's a little fun fact for you. Believe it or not, until after 1945, toothpaste actually contained soap. And then they started replacing it with ingredients like your sodium lauryl sulfates. And then you got your fluoride factor, because once again, like you were saying, you know, it's a byproduct of the the atom bomb. So what are they going to do with it? 
you know, they start putting it in the farm fields. They start putting, oh, toothpaste, there's an idea. And in the water. And, you know, honestly, it's a matter of just doing your own research. I mean, because there really isn't one solid piece of evidence, in my opinion, out there that shows that fluoride actually does anything good for you. When really, if you do your research, which I encourage it, it's you'll find that all it does is literally like start deteriorating your body from the inside out. And then you have like the fluorosis, like you were talking about the spots on their teeth. And then, you know, oh, let's blame it on. Well, plaque's just been sitting on your teeth. No, it's from the inside out, like what you experienced. And even these poor little babies that are getting bottle rot from having it in the, the water and in their bottle and their formula. I didn't know about that, but that's, that's yeah. heartbreaking. It, it really mean, is. It, it really is. It's, it's just fear that will make people be in denial about the fact that this is uh, even a problem. But it's it's something that we should all be just stop everything and and everybody do s- just start talking about it and figure out a solution until we have it out of the water supply. Uh, right. I went to the dentist and there was a pamphlet about why fluoride is important. I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. It's just this weird culture of uh, for profit do anything. I mean, when I was at the dentist last, my dentist is a good guy. The, the hygienist, they are good people, but they wanted to give me an x-ray. And I'm like, there's no reason to give me an x-ray right now. You just are doing it because you can build the insurance company that you did an x-ray. That's, that's, that's it. I mean, exactly. I don't need that extra dose of radiation today. No, thank you. And by the way, next time you're in that situation, you can say no to that kind of shit. And we are so conditioned to listen to authority figures and sorry, I'm getting a little angry and ranty, but we're so good to listen to authority figures that were like, toothpaste is fine because it's out there and everybody uses it. Uh, it's fine to just get an x-ray for no reason because my dentist said so. All right. If that's what you really think, but, uh, <laughs> just stand up for yourself and your rights and, and, uh, taking back your mouth is a good place to start. So you, I, I think you guys should all check out the, uh, Oakwood tooth bar because it's also quite affordable. Absolutely. That's a good point, too, is uh, with the cost of it, we have it at eleven twenty-five. You'll see a lot of different sales that go on as well. But regardless, it lasts anywhere from, I'd say, four to six months. You shouldn't have an issue lasting longer, but it depends on, like, are you really scrubbing away at it? I because it, shit out of it. I'm on a lot Right, of it. right. Yep. <laughs> yep. I have some family members that like to do that, too. So, I mean, it just kind of depends, but still, it's it's economically a sound product where it does it last you a lot longer. It's doing a lot better for you. And we are in an age of awakening, which is great. But at the same time, I know it's scary, but at the same token, the truth is still the truth. Even if you want to turn a cheek to it, it's still there. And you are your greatest authoritative figure. You are the only one that can truly love yourself the most and care for yourself the most. And set an example for other people. We're all in this together. So we're just helping to encourage that. You're the yeah. Illuminati in your own life. If you're the one who's still choosing to drink tap water from the city. I mean, you might be like, this is the only thing I've got. Well, even if it's not an ideal long-term solution, you could always go find some bottled um, water that's in some way pure, purified, or you can start looking into getting a way to purify your own water. Um, but it starts, you know, the awakening process, as you were uh, touching on there, that begins when you decide to start taking the steps, even though they're one at a time and you can't do it all at once, that are going to move you away from this illusory control system is what it is that makes us put things like neurotoxic fluoride in our toothpaste and water and into a more natural model where we start doing things like making our own tooth bars and inventing things. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's one of the main reasons I was so excited to talk to you, Amy, is because you're a straight up inventor. If you ask me, this didn't exist before you made it. So speaking of, she, you were saying that um, it started out as a body bar, but right. then how did that, how did that progress to the tooth bar? Well, yeah, well, actually, uh, there was a need for an actual tooth cleanser that would go above and beyond all the toxicity of tooth cleansers that were out there. My husband in general had some severe periodontal issues. And what goes with that is everything from, you know, the receding gum lines, the, the heavy plaque, uh, even loose teeth, you know, and when it's a matter of yeah, you could just lose your teeth all one day. That That's the scare factor right there. And a lot of times that's what it takes for someone to really wake up. And for me, I just couldn't accept that. 
And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do whatever I can to make this not happen. And at the time, Dr. Sheely, um, he's a big holistic doctor here locally. He had talked about brushing teeth with soap and <laughs> granted, we tried it and it was pretty awful. You know, if you grab like <laughs> some Irish spring and, and not only that, but it's kind of, you know, it's not as natural as I would have preferred, but it was a good starting point of, okay, so I tried this but I really want to go beyond that. And so with all the research that I've constantly done, uh, when I got really into the whole natural field of things several years ago, I just started accumulating that and going off that and putting all that I could into it as far as, like I was saying, not just about the flavor, but I wanted each individual ingredient to have a purpose to not only help with cleaning the teeth, but going beyond that as far as health and well-being goes. And so that was created. And my husband started brushing his teeth with that. And of course, I did too. And we both noticed results. And here I thought I had just fabulous teeth. I was like, I'm fine, but I'm going to use it, you know, now that I know the, the difference of how this is so much better. And for him, it was such a huge difference because the um, the plaque along the gum lines was coming off. The gums were starting to see a huge difference. And even his teeth were like, you couldn't wiggle them. They were so much stronger. It was like, is this for real? And then I had tooth sensitivity. That was one thing that I have always had issues with. And, you know, I'd been using it for a few days and I'm like, wait a minute. I am not using super warm water. I mean, my water to brush my teeth couldn't just be like kind of cool or lukewarm. It had to be like practically hot because it would really hurt my teeth. The cold water would. And suddenly I was using cool water. Didn't have a problem. I was kind of scared. The next day I tried super cold water and I'm like, this is unreal. I have no tooth sensitivity because my teeth, experience. right. Cause our teeth are allowed to re-enamelize. They're not being coated anymore. Mm -hmm. When I was at the dentist, to bring that up again, mm -hmm. they spray water on your teeth to like rinse whatever weird stuff that they're using to scrub them down. And um, that used to always bother me really bad. The cold water right. Spray directly on my teeth. And this time I was just like, bring it on. And it didn't bother <laughs> me at all. And the other thing that has uh, uh, been a benefit for me is my gums. Like I said before, my dentist used to always tell me my gums were receding more and more every time I went. Well... This time, my gums appeared to have actually come back, uh, grown back to a more normal state, less diseased state, you could say. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's really awesome. So what are some of the other, um, what are some of the example flavors, I could, I guess you would call it, of the tooth bar besides the ginger and turmeric? And could you touch on what some of the uh, benefits of that are, of each one are? Well, we have um, the... Mint for your typical mint lovers of toothpaste. However, like you were saying earlier, you can brush your teeth with the minty tooth bar and afterwards you could eat or drink something and it doesn't taste like mint toothpaste. So that's nice. And then your uh, peppermint in general helps with all sorts of oral, like the bad breath. Um, and also it can be pain relieving in a sense. A lot of people don't necessarily know that. Usually when you think of like pain relieving, you think of different herbs, but peppermint can help with that too. And uh, we also have, let's see, the minty. We have the cineclove. And so that has like your cinnamon and your clove. And so that's going to be more of your warming one. And <laughs> On my counter, I have like an array of colors. It's almost like Skittles, but in tooth bars, because depending on what mood I'm in, I'll just pick a different tooth bar each time I brush my teeth, because sometimes I just want like a warm, feel good feeling. So I'll grab this in a clove because it's nice and warming and it's, it's calming in a sense. And then the cinnamon and clove together are nice as far as pain relieving as well. If you're having any issues with that, we also have the turmeric, which has gotten a lot of exposure you know the whole turmeric was starting to become more well known for all of its benefits i mean there's so much research out there now that can be looked up where it's proven um scientifically as effective as 14 major pharmaceutical drugs out there but without the side effects oh what a novel concept and so with the turmeric it has obviously the turmeric in there and it's organic and then we have um it's like more of a minty lemon flavor, but there's not even any actual lemon in there because 
you know, you want to be a little careful with lemon. You don't want the acidity to eat away your teeth. I mean, there's different things out there as far as whitening, but you have to be really careful. So what that is, is it's actually mocking it with um, like a, you may have heard of like Mei Chang or let's see a Qboba. And it's more of like a peppering plant, but it resembles the lemon. And so we use that in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And a lot of these uh, tooth bars, of course, have ingredients in there that are known for like antibacterial and things of that nature. Um, we also have, we actually have a lot. We have seven flavors and we're just getting ready to launch a new one, which we're very excited about, which I'll, I'll get to in a minute. But we also have the ginger mint. So you have your ginger, which ginger you hear a lot about that with stomach issues, but it also helps with dental issues as well. And then of course it has a peppermint and it has a spearmint in there as well. So a lot of the same properties there. Isn't ginger also anti-inflammatory? Yes, yes. And so is the turmeric as well too. Um, let's see, we also have... I'm trying to go through the different chakras because that's how I remember because it's, they're color coded. And that actually was the reasoning behind it, too. So there's your little it's fun little quote. <laughs> it's completely inspired, honestly. Yeah. I, like, I'm so glad we're having this conversation. You're blowing my fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't well, thanks. That you were uh, coding, color coding into the ch chakras. And yeah. um, I, I actually just didn't realize... Of course, it would have made sense, but I didn't realize you were on such a spiritual path with your creations. But of course, anybody that is inspired to invent something that is really for the sake of helping others must have um, at least some connection to spirit going on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then when we got through all those flavors, uh, we went ahead and brought up the frankincense. And right after we did the frankincense, then you started having trickling information about how great frankincense is because, you know, once again, I'm I'm not disclosing this as a statement. There's my little disclosure, but you can do the research yourself. Frankincense is known for like its healing properties all the way to like cancer. And so we have that. And with the frankincense, it has the wild crafted frankincense. And then it has more of like a, a lemony frankincense. So it's not like just straight frankincense, which, you know, if you're not used to that, that can be a little different. And then we have the myrrh spice, which is very similar to your cinna clove as far as the flavoring. But it has your myrrh in there as well, the wild crafted myrrh. So it's kind of neat because people that are just switching over from toothpaste and they've been using that their whole life, they get so excited. They want to go straight for like the gung ho one, like, let's do the myrrh or the frankincense or ooh, this turmeric and that's great i would just say be ready because it is more of our bolder one especially the turmeric if you're not used to that or so excited that you're ready to like join this train you might want to like try the mint first though or have another little option just in case it's a little different for you you'll be fine <laughs> do it do it <laughs> we tell them that and usually that's what happened they're like no we're doing the turmeric i'm like okay and our latest one, which I just gave to you guys, oh, wow. <laughs> this one's really exciting. This is one we've been thinking about for a while and trying to formulate just right. And it's going to be the uh, charcoal opa tooth bar. And it has your, uh, your coconut activated charcoal. And it is a ginger mint flavor on that. And that's what we have that we're getting ready to launch out. So you guys are the first to try that one. And it's neat because we're doing uh, two different concepts on that. We have the actual open tooth bar. And a lot of you know, perhaps that turmeric helps with whitening. Activated charcoal does too. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but it's a great detoxifier. And so you're getting all that fun stuff going on with the uh, charcoal open tooth bar. And then we have the opa bars. And which if you happen to get poisoned, you could probably eat it. There you go. Yeah. That's another thing with the tooth bars. If you swallow it, it's not like fluoride where you have to like hope that you actually get a hold of the poison control in time. If anything, it would act as a, a cleanse. I mean, <laughs> so, so not that I would say eat it, but still, you know. Would you advise against swallowing a toothpaste? Because um, I haven't. <clears throat> but what, what I do with it actually is I, I get it really sudsy in my mouth so after i'm done brushing i can just actually just let it sit in my mouth coating my teeth for a minute or two and i just because uh, haley's been doing these coconut oil mouth pull things uh -huh. oil pulling oh yeah oil pulling so that's something that i've been trying lately and i have noticed a pretty dramatic difference in my teeth actually whiteness wise and also 
I have pretty good gum health as is, and the OPA bars also help that, but um, definitely strong, uh, have strengthened my gums. I floss a lot, so, you know, occasionally one would, uh, especially this one spot in my gums, I would have some bleeding, and that's gone away since I started doing OPA bar and oil pull, but... Anyway, you take uh, a tablespoon of any type of oil, which I've read mostly about using coconut oil, and that's the one that's supposed to have the most uh, whitening properties. Like if you did olive oil, I don't know that that would necessarily. Be oh, don't do that. Oil. I'm just saying I tried that the first time. It was so okay. thick I gagged. <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds terrible. I read online that someone did it, and I was like, no, I'm not going to go for it. But I did the coconut oil pull, and it. Uh, you swish it in your mouth for 20 minutes when uh, you're supposed to do it on an empty stomach and you get up in the morning uh, before you do anything, before you eat breakfast or drink anything, uh, floss your teeth and brush and uh, with water and then just put a tablespoon of coconut oil in your mouth and swish it around and it's supposed to pull out any bacteria that's in your gums, it's detoxifying and then after you're done you spit it in the trash can, not in the sink, don't spit oil down your sink. Um, spit it in the trash can, and after probably about a week, I noticed my teeth getting whiter, and they've continued to do so. It's been about, I've probably been doing it for about two weeks now, but anyways, that's the lowdown on oil pulling. Oh, it's you incredible. That works on a similar principle that your tooth bars are working on? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to make any claims. I'm just going to let you try it, and you tell me for yourself kind of a thing, but I did want to add to the oil pulling. That is remarkable because it actually acts as a magnet pulling all the toxins, not only from your mouth, but your whole body. And the Ayurvedic doctor that brought it to light and surfaced it, it made a, a statement where he's like, well, I'm not going to claim this, so to speak, but I wouldn't doubt that it would even like, I mean, it would even help with cancer was his, his main statement on that as far as I'm not claiming it, but I'm saying that I'm sure it would even be helpful with that. I mean, it can help with everything from um, reproductive issues. I've had a really bad migraine before. And I, you know, I hear a little voice in your head, like, maybe you should do this. And suddenly it was like, maybe you should oil pull. And I'm like, are you kidding? I can't oil pull. My head is pounding. Next thing you know, I'm oil pulling. It took my migraine away. And I was wow. like, this is no joke. Yeah. And when you're done, you can even tell because... First of all, it gets really thick when you're oil pulling and you don't want to do it vigorously. You want to just do it gently through your teeth, around your tongue. And then when you do eventually spit it out, it'll be a solid color. Sometimes people even say it's almost a yellow color, depending on how much toxin is coming out. And yeah, you don't want to swallow it. I'm not going to lie. One time I kind of leaned the wrong way and a little bit swelled. I was like, oh, that's so gross. I'm not going to like redo it because it's in me. Uh <laughs> But no, it's great. We actually suggest it to a lot of people, you know, do that with the tooth bar because it's like getting your whole body, you know, and the fact that it acts as a, a magnet drawing all that out. And that I, new one you may, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, well, I'm in a biology class actively right now and we just talked about viruses. So um, this is something that I read online and anyone listening should just do their own research on this. But when I... Um, we learned about viruses in biology, and we didn't really talk about this, so that's why I say it might not be true. But when I was reading about oil pulling, it said the reason that it acts as a magnet is because um, the obviously coconut oil is pretty much just it's, it's just fat. It's oil. It's just pure fat. Well, the any viruses or um, any viruses that are living, you know, in your gums or in that area will have a lipid outer layer, and that lipid layer is attracted to the coconut oil. So what happens is when you swish it through your teeth or over your gums or whatever, it pulls out that virus because the oils are attracted to each other. And then it, the coconut oil just holds it in there. So as you're swishing, it's not like you're just redistributing bacteria and viruses and things. It's actually being held within the coconut oil. But again, I just read that on a website about oil pulling. I didn't check the source, so that might need more research. But That sounds about right, though. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I would imagine that the activated charcoal product that you... You told us that that could actually be used as just like a body soap or a shampoo as well. I was right. imagining that it could have a similar uh, a similar effect on your actual skin pulling toxins out that way. Oh yeah, and like we. Feet. Would, I'm gonna use it on my feet. <laughs> I did, I did. Yeah, I mean, right now we're launch, we're getting ready to launch the um, which by the time you guys you know start researching, it'll probably even be out there because we're literally like ASAP getting it available. And so it'll be available in the tooth bar, in the jar, but it will also be available in the OPA bar, which is like your head to toe uh, 
bar soap for your hair, for shaving, for your body, and even to brush your teeth if you wanted to. And then, you know, people are like, oh, how do you clean it? And I'm like, oh, you know, that's a tough one. How do you clean soap? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. And so that's the, the neat thing, too, is like we were talking earlier about all the different places where you could take these things and how it would yeah. be, you know, great benefit on the go. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's another good point, too. It's very compact. And if you're able to use the regular OPA bar for brushing your teeth also, then literally for travel, all you need is this yes. one small object that is going to help you not just stay physically clean, because that's nice and smell better, but uh, and have better breath, but actually be a less toxic person on a biological level that will probably translate to a, a personal mental level because your mind and your body and your spirit are connected as one. So wherever you can detoxify yourself, you will find an, incre an increase in energy correspondingly in the other parts of yourself. So if you, I mean, literally right now hearing this, I, I will claim that if you are feeling kind of stuck in your routine and in your life and you got one of these Opabar products, you might be able to dislodge some toxicity that could maybe help you flow more in other areas. So I, I won't say what that means or how that will manifest, but... It's, it is that good of a thing. And even, you know, you can even base which one that you bought on how you're feeling uh, right now, what you want to improve or enhance in your life and just correspond that to the chakra system and be like, I think my root needs more strength. Uh, which, which open bar would that be? That's the turmeric ginger? That's the cinnamon clove. Cinnamon clove, yeah, because right? it's the warming. Uh -huh. And we got the red on there. So it is matching your, your red root or base chakra. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we have the turmeric is your orange. Okay. The lemon drop lemon and or lemon <laughs> color of lemon yellow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, solar plexus. And then we have uh, the mint is the heart chakra, so it's green. And then you have the ginger mint, which is going to be your throat. So it's almost like a, a deeper aqua teal almost. And then we have the frankincense for your third eye so it's purple or like indigo and then the myrrh spice is your magenta or pink or pinky purple because that's another thing too is you'll see that for different chakras you know what they label the coloring as and so your your myrrh spice is going to be your crown your crown chakra and a lot of times the different uh, ingredients that we have in the different tooth bars can relate to other chakras as well. But these were made with love specifically for those areas. And of course, you know, they can relate to others as well. I guarantee your your bottle of Crest toothpaste has zero love in it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Nobody ever yeah. loved it. Yeah. And I don't really know what chakra would help other than the <laughs> death chakra. Shut <laughs> your chakras down. Right. If you swallow that whole tube, you literally. Oh my die. gosh. <laughs> oh, scary. <laughs> That's yeah, scary. Well, so it would like come out your eyes and ears and why nose. Would you, why would you brush your teeth with something that if you eat enough of it, you have to call poison control? Why would you brush your teeth? You're putting with that, that in your body. Crazy. It's absorbed. Yeah, it's completely exactly. crazy. Um, exactly. So then you've got also the uh, the eighth color I would consider black and the ninth color white, uh, which, which is kind of tricky. You've got the black one with the, the charcoal. Well, charcoal, yeah. So now you just need one that's oriented towards... Um, Maybe towards just like active energy or something like that. That could be how you uh, embody the the white or the I would consider it the masculine side, and then the charcoal could be like the the feminine. The yin and the yang. Yeah. Yep, yep. You got it. You know you'll be the first to get to taste that one. Oh, yeah. taste it, test it. <laughs> I mean, clean with it. All the above. It's such a fun experience. And I wanted to bring me back to you were saying. Uh, it's like you actually don't mind brushing your teeth. We hear from a lot of customers that they actually look forward to brushing your teeth because it's like yeah. even when we are bred and raised to think that toothpaste along with all these other things in this toxic world are good for us, you know, we don't know better. And even those who instruct us to do it, they don't know better. Well, you know, it's time to, uh, you know, step up to the plate when you know let's help grow and make a difference. At this point, it's willful ignorance that yeah. keeps right. people in the, the toxic products. I mean, um, it, of course, your subconscious mind, your soul or your higher self knows that that toothpaste is poison because that part of you actually is connected to the all knowing. So 
Um, that's going to make it something that you inherently, intrinsically do not really want to do. Go well, brush your teeth. Right. Poison. <laughs> and especially, you know, children who are still have that youth, even though they're attacked the most at a young age, you know, obviously because they're still like so connected in the innocence of things. What kid likes to brush their teeth? I mean, like, really? They don't. I wonder why, because it's like deep down, they know what's in there. They may not know because you didn't tell them, but it's like intuitively we're intuitive creatures. We're also intuitive creatures that were created to be able to heal ourselves in every aspect. And now we have not only adults, but even children that are like, is it time to brush my teeth? And the parents are like mind blown. They're like, my kids are actually excited about brushing their teeth because of the open tooth bar. And it's like, yeah, I am too. You know, which one am I going to pick this time to brush my teeth with? You know, it's, it's nice. It's fun. It feels good. And it's just like a whole new level of cleaning. You know, always bash toothpaste forever, but I'm also thinking about how, messy the toothpaste gets whenever it's all like squirted outside the cap and you're trying to uh, squeeze the cap back on and it's you know it's all sticky and uh, getting everywhere that will never happen to you with the opa tooth bar yeah. extremely clean easy to keep um from being a mess at all it's great so there's three things that I'm going to say. And the first thing is that the disclaimer is I am not being compensated by open tooth bars because I'm about to say some, some truth bombs. I'm about to drop some truth bombs and I'm not being paid for it. It's just truth. Nobody's paying anybody here. Other than <laughs> Amy did give us a free test product. Okay. I guess. Yeah, I guess that was unexpected. They didn't know about that, but <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> so uh, uh, we brought this up a little bit earlier and you were talking about the messiness of toothpaste, but um, festival wise, obviously we love to go to music festivals and traveling and that has been one of the most convenient aspects of the tooth bar because it does not make a mess and you don't have to worry about it um, overheating in your car or exploding in your toiletry bag and you don't have to worry about the size of it whenever you're getting on a plane. So all of those things are great. And then earlier you said the word cramming with uh, <laughs> how regular toothpaste like crams your gums whole right, you know, right. Uh, chemicals basically but teeth are teeth are porous and that fluoride just seals it shut so using the tooth bar allows your teeth to actually breathe and it, it's just so noticeable that they're not sealed there's not that that film that's just uh sealing the pores of your teeth that are meant to remain you know open and free. right so. What we're talking about here, people, is literally the difference between life and death for your teeth, for your mouth. Literally, like, we're, we were all put on a trajectory towards death. And not just in our mouth and our teeth, but our physical body, too. It's been, that's that's the way that, that's the train that we all were born on. So, like, are you, are we going to hop off that train? Because, uh, I, it's it's definitely not what we want, right? Like, we don't right. want to have that future where our we're having to use dentures. Like we've seen our grandparents in that situation. And, um, it's gotta be, it's gotta be hum like somewhat humiliating and difficult and just frustrating. frustrating. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, it's just completely, it's completely sad that, uh, so many people were actually subjected to these kind of toxic products before the age of the internet where they could, uh, collaborate their information and research and find out just how bad these things were. I mean, at any point, I'm sure there are people telling the truth because the truth has always existed. It, it's never gone anywhere. It's just a matter of if we were connected to it. Um, so thank you so much for sharing what truth you could find in order to help other people. That's Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm passionate about it. I'm very passionate about it. And, you know, I'd have to say my journey started when I had issues even within myself and I'm just like, there has to be a bigger truth. And then when I lost my mom to cancer, who was one of the most healthiest women ever. And I'm like, that's it. We live like in a hell of a sense. I mean, granted, we can make the best of it, but it's so toxic out there that we really have to be smart. We want it to be a hell. They're right. trying to create that actively, yes. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the, the truth is out there. The alternatives are out there. And we're not trying to, like, discourage or make anyone feel uncomfortable as far as if you do have any dental issues, if you've lost teeth, if you have dentures – we're here to help because that's another thing is I started noticing like I'm a little over anal on every little detail of things that I notice. And I've even noticed through the years, you'll see denture billboards or ads 
And they're young people. It used to always be older people you'd see that would be promoting that. And it's like, wait a minute, this shouldn't be this way. And you made another good point. You know, you say a matter of life and death and not just your teeth, but your body. Most of your general health issues derive from where? Your mouth. What you eat. So it's like, let's take care of our mouths. And yes, let's even clean up our diet too. I mean, it goes in the mouth is what I mean. Like, right. That, that's a right. Like, uh, and also the other side of this is that the reason that these kind of things have been allowed to perpetuate is also connected to our mouth and that people w- are in denial or too afraid to open their mouth about certain things that they feel like, oh, I'm just going to be called a conspiracy theorist or I'm just going to be called a crazy hippie just because I'm trying to promote this uh, alternative to toothpaste. Why do you need an alternative to toothpaste? We figured that out a long time ago. Toothpaste is fine. Like that's uh-huh. that's the mind control uh, uh, denial. But like opening your mouth to speak about this kind of stuff is hugely as hugely important to creating a new world as eating the right things and um having the proper type of medicine also. And well, the toothpaste is probably fine if it's FDA approved. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, isn't that right there with fluoride? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is. It's just a matter of being aware. And if you have like that little nudge that you get inside, don't be afraid of it. It's called your intuition. And, you know, the whole lifespan of all of us in a way is created to dim that, but it's always there. So don't be afraid. Just Take it by the hand. It'll show you some really cool stuff. Might be a little scary, but bit by bit, it'll be really cool. And you'll be all the better for it. You only get, I mean, your teeth are bones. You only get one shot with them. Once they're, once right. they're you know, get it, once you get certain types of damage and erosion, and it's, it's not really repairable in the sense that you can't grow back. You can't grow back the bone itself, really. You yeah. Know, you know, you... That's why you have to take care of it, because um, if you don't, you only get one shot. You can't grow new a new set of teeth once they're gone. So and that's the thing, too, like if you had other bones that were sticking out, like let's say our, you know, our elbow or something didn't have flesh on it and it was just the way we were made and it was just bone hanging out there. Would you put paste on it to clean it? Or would you clean it with like, you know, soap? I mean, we clean everything with soap, everything. From utensils to cups to our house to everything, but we're cleaning our teeth with with paste. You know what the definition of a paste is? It's a paste. It's not a cleanser. It's a paste. <laughs> the answer is right there when you say it. Yeah. So it's just you know, I know you've got to be intrigued, and it is. It's something totally different. And that's why we just say you know, just try it. Give it a try. I and the answers are there. Another. You know, another meaning of the word paste is just like something that glues something together and uh, right. that completely can tie in to the aspect of so many people not opening their mouths about what they know is wrong in the world and needs to be fixed. Uh, your mouth is glued shut by toothpaste. That's why you can't speak <laughs> on these topics. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point. Yeah. And I mean, I, I know too, like a lot of times people are like, well, you know, what's the point in speaking about this or looking into that? You know, I don't, I want to be optimistic. I don't want to be, everything's just horrible. Well, it's not that, but okay. So let's focus on answers. Here's an answer. You've given a, us a freebie on this one. I mean, honestly, this is something that, uh, uh, how long would I have just kept using toothpaste before I finally decided, okay, I've got to get a different solution. I know I have friends that use baking, um, baking soda as an alternative. And I hear that that works pretty well. And it's I would, very abrasive though. Right. Right. And I would definitely recommend that over toothpaste still. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm sure there are some non-toxic toothpaste out there, but that's still not the type of, um, medicinal product that the OPA bar is. Not only that too, but any toothpaste, I mean, even like your natural ones, to get that paste consistency, they use glycerin. And most of the times it's going to be like your, um, your, oh, what is it called? Propylene glycol, which is highly irritating to your mouth. 
And so that's why it's like you're always having these issues. And if it's like the natural vegetable glycerin, okay, well, that's a little better, but there's so much used to get that paste consistency. That's why it's still coating your teeth. Mm -hmm. That's why it's still taking so many rinses to get off of your teeth. So, and you know, when I had the tooth sensitivity, I tried everything, like even like your, your top brands out there that are known for helping with your tooth sensitivity and they still didn't work for me. And, you know, honestly, when you're, I like to look at it this way, when you have nail polish on your nails and you have it for so long and then you finally take it off, you know how it kind of like, like hurts your nails kind of hurt a little bit because it doesn't have that weight on it anymore. It's almost like that. You know, when you have paste constantly on your teeth, you know, it's not letting, like you said, it's not letting them breathe. It's not letting them re -animalize. It's just being coated with this heavy substance. So of course it's going to cause sensitivity issues. Yeah. Um, it's. It's just amazing how many aspects of your health are governed by the mouth. And uh, I, we could probably go on for forever and ever about um, toothpaste. But I think since we've basically nailed that into the ground, I, I'll make one more point about the Opa Bar and, uh, that I think is important. It's less trash uh, created, less that needs to be recycled than the standard issue tube of toothpaste would create because mm -hmm. it's just a small little plastic box that can be easily recycled. Um, but I would like to switch gears a little bit in the end of our conversation and just ask you what other areas of your life have you found um, some form of illumination in where you've changed 180 degrees from what our society taught us to do and you've started doing something different? Well... I used to have severe stomach issues, like bad, and I couldn't figure it out. I had all these horrible tests done, had on all these different medications, you know, oh, take this, then you have a side effect, then you have to take this, and the next thing you know, you have four different things for one thing, and none of it's helping. And I was told that I had to stay away from a lot of different fruits and vegetables, and that just didn't sound right to me. And eventually, I just got to where I was like, you know what? I feel that there's truth out there and there's just a lot of lies. And right now they're just showing their face to me. So I took all the medications for these stomach issues I was having, threw them away. And the next thing I knew is I was like, you know, I'm on this big journey for natural and raw and holistic. I went on a raw diet and I had a huge turnaround. All of a sudden I was eating the fruits and vegetables I was told to stay away from, not taking all the big pharma medications my stomach was healing. It was like, oh, wow, you know, you listen to your gut, literally, and these things start happening. So that was the beginning of my journey is I was like, wow, you know, if this is something that I can heal from, just imagine what else I can do. And I had to share with everyone, you know, I just couldn't keep it to myself. Like when we had the tooth bar, it started with something that I created out of love specifically for my husband's periodontal issues. I mean, these were the most severe things that I needed to address. And when we started noticing results, I just had to share with the world. And that's really, you know, where it started. And I'd have to say, <clears throat> diet is huge. It is so huge. And, you know, if you're being told not to have certain fruits and vegetables because they're acidic or this and that, well, you know what, maybe you should just go all fruits and vegetables for a while. And you don't have to go like on a raw diet for a long, long time or anything, but just to see what happens, start your day drinking water you'll be amazed at what it will do for you. And the thing is, you know, if you feed yourself what you actually are needing as far as nutrients and not just getting fillers that have no nutrients at all, and you wonder why you have brain fog or why you're lacking and you're having fatigue, well, you know, you need real foods and, and those things are here. So do it. But I would say, Keep an eye out. I know it can be a little pricier, but you know what? Sick care is a lot more expensive than, than healthy care. But it's not that much more expensive. No. A head of lettuce versus a box of crackers. Two boxes of crackers because you know after you eat one box, you're not going to be full. You're going to have to have a second. <laughs> last box of crackers I bought was gone before we had been home from the store for an hour. Although yeah. they were at least gluten-free. There you go. That's another thing. You know, gluten, when I got away from gluten, oh my goodness, because I used to have eczema issues mm -hmm. and I thought it was because I washed my hands a lot, took the gluten out. Whoa. It's like, this is amazing. You know, the I mean, Greek it's a huge difference. Uh, the Greek philosopher Hippocrates said, uh, well, a, a well-known and often remembered statement, let thy food be thy, thy medicine. medicine and then medicine be thy food. Well, no, I'm going to amend that and say, let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be an opa bar. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> opa. <laughs> and of course, opa 
is Greek. I know in Germany it can mean grandpa. And, you know, that's cool because grandpas are cool. But as far as being Greek, Opa is like, hooray. So Opa box is like, Hooray box. It's an embrace of everything that makes you go hooray. And so the Opa tooth bar is like, hooray, we have something that actually cleans our teeth the right way. <laughs> but more than that, those other ingredients do have a medicinal effect on the person that is positive. So you literally, literally are able to get positive effects out of brushing your teeth the way that you might go turn to a bottle of an essential oil for. Like the the mint one could actually help with a headache potentially. Right, right. Have you had or stomach report? issues even. Have you had those type of results reported? You know what? Actually, I think it's just been a domino effect because it starts with, wow, this is incredible. And then next thing you know, it's, I feel such a difference in general, you know, like they're, they're more uplifted. They feel like they have more energy. Maybe it's just a matter of they started changing the way they brush their teeth. Then they start changing their diet. It's just a domino effect. You know, it is because once you free up that little bit of energy from wherever it is that it's, I mean, your energy right now, you listening to me right now, I, I almost guarantee unless you're some sort of magical, mystical, enlightened person, there has got to be energy in your field of self that is blocked by some sort of toxicity. And any place that you can reclaim that, whether it's by making a change in your diet or making a change for the better for um, getting more exercise or getting an actual medicinal product into your life like the Opa Bar and getting a toxic product out like toothpaste, that tiny bit of free energy can have a huge cascading effect throughout your entire life because if you have, if you're five percent better every at everything you're doing, it's it's a um, exponential cumulative effect, and you will maybe have that much more energy to make the next step that you need to change for the better, and all of a sudden you've got a positive chain reaction, and that's actually what life is supposed to be. Life is not supposed to be this. A uh, train of miseries and bad things happen to me, and oh, poor me about this, and I'm and I'm a victim about that, and the government is doing this and that, and there's nothing we can do. It's actually about what can you do with what you've got, and how can you make the 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 next positive change, and um, if you really want to tap into your own personal genius, which genius itself is actually meaning like your own higher self or spirit. That's the etymological definition of the word, then I would advise take your example, Amy, and find a way to help somebody else with a problem that they've got, do it out of love, and then you'll have a, a real inspir a real inspiration, a real um, miracle can be in pulled through. I mean, you've invented a miraculous product here, and it's nothing new technically because all of these components are natural and have existed, but what you did was your own research and um, you address the needs of others and you combine that to um, manifest something into the world that can literally lift up thousands or millions of people if it actually took off to that point. And I, I, that leads me to a, a question, actually. Are you interested in trying to expand this operation like to a huge global level or would you be more interested in helping other people start um, learning how to produce this kind of stuff for themselves in their own regions? Well, I'd say right now it's a matter of just getting it to as many people as we can because it was something that's just been so intensively manifested and created. And we do have customers literally all over the globe, not just in the States. And that was actually by shock because it was just, oh, let's share with friends, let's share with family. And then, you know, we did network from there and have it throughout the States. And then the next thing you know, we have people in Germany, people in Brazil, people in Peru, and it just kept going and going. And it's just, you know, it's great. And the thing is, we're in a, a world that is so fast paced that they want to be able to have something that they can just go and grab and use. But when they become aware of how what they're grabbing and using may not be the, the best for them, this is an option. This is an option where they actually can grab something that's good for them. So we're, we're still continuing on the train of just getting it into as many hands as we can. We started, like I said, with it just being more of a, a smaller thing, but it just keeps growing. My thing is, I just want it to continue growing as a passionate thing, not just 
oh, let's get in this place, this place, with this place. It's not that at all. It's I want to really see who all I can help because that's really what it was created for. This is just help heal in a sense, even though I'm not saying that we can't say it heals, just saying, but anyway, <laughs> but you can, well, but, <laughs> but you know, just to change a perception for, for everybody, because a lot of people, you know, that know me are like, Oh, you're just so happy. And you're just this ball of love. And this you know, Oh, <laughs> Oh, it must be nice. You just wake up and you're like, I'm sunshine. I'm like, actually it's the hardest thing to do. Because in this world, I'm surrounded so much by the opposite on the majority. You're swimming upstream. Right. Yeah, I understand the feeling. But it's not about, you know, like, and people are like, oh, you just think positive and that's just going to solve everything. I don't look at it as thinking positively. I look at it as thinking of what the possibilities are. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, ignorance is bliss, but uh, the truths and the untruths are still out there. Ignorance is death. Yeah, th there you go. Even better put. Yeah. So this was a, a point of rippling effect to just get people to just try it and then see what happens because it does. It networks from there. It, it's a ripple effect throughout their whole system, throughout everybody around them. And, you know, if we can all help change the world just one step at a time or one thing that we do for ourselves instead of harming ourselves to help ourselves. Isn't that what it's all about? You know, I mean... I think that that is what it's all about. Yeah, we talked to, well, uh, we touched on this earlier a little bit, but it's kind of like you could be presented with this information about, um, let's say someone listening to this podcast had no idea fluoride was bad, and now they're looking it up for themselves, and they're like, oh, crap. Well, it could be whenever you find out about something that's not good for your health or you find out about something that's um, in some way negative Im negatively impacting you, you can either be afraid and turn away from it or be afraid and feel hopeless, or you can do um, the right thing and, and fix it. And with uh, like the OPA bars, the solution is already is already laid out for the people who are willing to look at the facts. So it's like it's it's not even a negative thing in any way. Um, it's it's a positive thing because it's like, oh, wow, now I know now I can fix it. Now I can do what's right for my body and what's right for my my teeth. And of course, it goes deeper than that. It's like that with any issue. But um, sometimes people don't want to be the ones who paved the way. And so you're the true pioneer of, <laughs> uh, of this, the, the OPA tooth bars. But um, I think everybody should just follow your example more and, and um, unwaveringly go into something that's an issue and try to find solutions to that instead of just ignoring it. Right. So it's, uh, it's beautiful that you did that. And I'm very appreciative of, Thank of you. having <laughs> your your bar is in my home and you in my home. And <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate being in your home. <laughs> and you know, the thing too, like if people are scared and want to, you know, you were saying, is it something, you know, that other people could learn to do? Honestly, like I said, when I very first tried the whole, let me brush my teeth with soap. Yeah. You can grab any soap. Honestly, you could, but you know, uh, it, it'll give you the gag factor. It's not quite the same. And through all of the years that I put into extensive research and trial and error and figuring out, you know, this is the perfect blend for this. We make it to where it takes the edge off of brushing your teeth with soap. It actually makes it more enjoyable. You know, I'd have to say the one thing that we hear sometimes is it does taste a little soapy, but it's not like bad soap. And I'm like, yeah, because it still is. I mean, it's a tooth soap, but we take the edge off of it and make it more enjoyable experience for you. Oh, yeah, it's not that. I've gotten soap in my mouth before and it was not pleasant. I've never tried brushing with soap, never even knew that was a thing, but I've gotten it in my mouth before and it was one of those things where it was just like, I'll never forget the taste and I spit it out instantly. But you're course, like, give me the open tooth bar. That yeah. was horrible. Yeah. We need to have something good now. <laughs> your, uh, your mouth needs some soap. Y'all are nasty. You know, Wash that mouth bar. out. <laughs> oh, the, the last, the last thing I'll touch on, um, before we wrap up here is something that I've been meaning to bring up the whole time, which is the, the, uh, third eye factor with fluoride and with just general toxicity in your lifestyle. The third eye, if you're, uh, unaware of what that chakra or energy system or energy vortex in the body represents, it represents your imaginative capacity. And 
this is the most important, um, this is possibly the most important thing that we could be working to unlock right now as a species because the reason that we are so locked into a toxic culture of death that's marching our way towards a, a desolate planet is because we can't imagine living our lives any differently. It's not, it's, it's literally that. It's, it's that we can't imagine something different than going to the grocery store and going to our, our job and driving in a car. And until we start um, evolving solutions through the use of our third eye and our imagination, we will be stuck in the same pattern. So that's, uh, if that's the last reason that I can give you to get off of anything that has fluoride in it, whether it's your water supply or your toothpaste, uh, it's, it's literally something that can help you unlock your ability to imagine your creative potential, which is essentially the connection that you have with creation itself or your creator, if you want to consider it that way. It doesn't really matter. It's the entire universe that's inside of you that you are blocking off by having a calcified third eye, which is uh, the pineal gland in your brain. Uh, that's where this fluoride accumulates. And there's a lot of information about this. It's not a new type of thing to be suggesting. And in fact, for thousands of years, our, our wisdom keepers have told us that that gland, which is most affected by fluoride, is the seat of the soul or the imagination in the human being. And I don't necessarily think it's the seat of the soul. I think maybe our soul resides in the heart, but our capacity to actually see beyond the physical world that we are living in does come from that center or energy region of the brain. And um, the more that you can heal that, the more that you can start changing the way that you're living into it, uh, situation that's more harmonious for you, for the planet, for the people around you. And ultimately, you can start helping the people around you because that's what you're here to do. You're not here to be the next um, big DJ or to, uh, you know, to make it most money. Well, if you help people through that as a mechanism, sure. But you're not here for any purpose other than to help other people. And I, I can say that unequivocally. I think that if if that was what everyone's actual um, chosen intention was for their life, we would not have the world we have right now. And any any habit, whether it's a thought pattern, whether it's a physical habit, it, uh, it literally carves out a pathway in your brain. Your brain fires in that, in that direction, whether it's that thought or it's an action that you're doing that you do a lot or do every day habitually. Your brain, it, it, it creates like a divot in your brain. And the only way to change that is to change what you're doing. Wow. Amazing. Right. Novel concept. <laughs> yeah. So true. And that's why it can take a little longer to even change that because it's been carved in there. Right. But, you know, determination following through. Yes, it'll hurt when you make a whole new habit, but it's so much better when you follow through and do that. And on the fluoride aspect, um, I know a lot of people are like, well, do my filters take care of fluoride? A lot of them, no. If it says General Electric on it, then just don't trust that. <laughs> now, like the Berkey filters, they do have the fluoride filtering option. And we even have that available on our website because we firmly believe in how that is so important for people. Because we even noticed when we very first switched our water to that, to being fluoride free, we literally felt the opening and expansion of the third eye region. I mean, it, you literally are like, whoa, where have I been? It's like the fog lifts. It's incredible. And so, I mean, it, try it for yourself. Try going fluoride free even with your water. I mean, because it does. It makes a huge difference. So we've reached uh, past the a lot of time here for our conversation. I feel very strongly that we should get together and talk again. And Absolutely. maybe without even the necessity of focusing so much on the tooth bar product, mm -hmm. I feel like, honestly, I feel like we did a great job covering all the bases that we could imagine oh, yeah. uh, for why this is a good product, why the standard model for tooth care is bunk, and um, the importance of living a life of heart-centered uh, service to others and how that can transform your life as it has yours. Right. So Absolutely. Like to add before we uh, sign off here? Just add one thing. When you first start using the Opa Tooth Bar, you will notice all these little different changes as we just discussed. 
And then you'll go to the dentist and they'll be like, wow, look at those gums. Wow, look at your teeth. Wow, what are you doing differently? And you'll tell them and they'll go, huh. Well, anyway, you should still use toothpaste. I'm just letting you know they will still that say it because be, they've been trained. That just happened to me a couple weeks ago. Exactly. And they said they didn't tell me. They, they actually just ignored um, my answer to why my, my gums were better. And they're just like, oh, you've been brushing better. Okay. <laughs> they just took it to mean that I've been brushing more consistently. Because it's even a, a different concept for them. But I'd like to leave it with um, the thought of, okay, so... If toothpaste can't even keep your sink clean, you know how it coats your sink, it coats your <laughs> tooth breaths, how do you think it's going to keep your teeth clean? And like you said, too, you know, the tooth bar, it doesn't coat all over your sink or your toothbrush. It's cleaning all that as well as your teeth. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, Thank you so much for having me. This has been wonderful. I'd love to join your show again. It's been great. I really appreciate really it. Fun. And I like being on the show too. That was fun. Glad you're here too. <laughs> I do that more often because it allows me to practice listening and not uh, trying to figure out what to say next. And it's <laughs> for me because I like to hear the wisdom of people like yourself. Um, one, one last quick question. You think it's possible to throw out any kind of uh, coupon code or something related to this episode for your online store? Yes, we can. Um, we can set that up later. And let's I'll tell do that for sure. I'll tell people in the intro. Absolutely, because we would love to do that. I mean, anything just to kind of help along the way and even just to try it because it is, it's, it's so worth it. And I mean, I'm not saying that from my own self, just even from everyone. I'm saying that from my own self. <laughs> Have I never tried to get you guys to buy a product before in your life of listening to the show? Not once. I mean, this is even a departure for me as on this podcast because a lot of times I'm talking to someone who is a musician or a painter or something like that. But you are embodying the creative spirit through what you're doing. Absolutely. You are creating. And that's like the real focus of uh, the podcast is to show how through the creative aspect of ourselves, we can change our world and change our life. And, and those around us. So thanks for coming on the show. You're the epitome of the the type of person I love to bring to conversations here on Interverse. So um, many, many thanks. Much love. I'm sure the audience also really enjoyed this conversation. And thank you for co-hosting, Haley. We will have to have you do that again because oh, yeah. it was great. Opa! Opa! <laughs> Give a fuck if you try to chill tonight. Thanks for listening to our conversation with Amy. And before we go, I would like to read something to you that I came across recently that I found to be extremely cool and interesting. It is called the Declaration of Energy Independence. It was written by an organization called the Tesla Science Foundation. I really want to talk about Tesla in the future. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, just stay tuned and we'll get to that. But this Declaration of Energy Independence, I find to be extremely important and it's uh, a lot like the actual Declaration of Independence from 1776, where our country decided we didn't want to be part of a vampiric external, um, you know, monarchy system that was terrible. And now we're in a very similar boat as a people that we were back then, with the way that we're completely controlled and dominated by giant corporate interests like energy companies. So beyond that, all the ways in your life that there are things that are not harmonious to your greatest good or the planet's greatest good that we're being physically forced into by societal restrictions right now. Those things are things that we're going to have to take steps to change individually. But the first thing that comes before making any big changes like, um, you know, getting off of oil, for example, would be the declaration of our intention. So I wanted to read this because it seems like something that we can all synchronize behind and it represents what we're doing as a movement here in wanting to reclaim our sovereignty and our sustainable lifestyle with our planet. So here we go. In Conscience, July 10th, 2009. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for the people of Earth to dissolve the relationships, habits, and thought patterns that have bound us to an unsustainable energy paradigm, 
our conscience compels us to state our grievances with these outmoded systems and to declare our intentions for the future of free energy. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that in our modern age all means of energy production are not equal, some being polluting, limited, non-renewable, and controlled by corporate-driven profit motives, while others are clean, abundant, sustainable, and able to be made available for the betterment of all people, that human innovation and creativity has excelled beyond our current methodologies of energy production, that the current energy paradigm is ecologically unsound, economically unfeasible, socially divisive, and morally bankrupt, that dependency on our current energy production methods has led to the increasing environmental degradation of our living planet and to a growing systemic mentality of scarcity, lack, fear, aggression, and imperialism, that free energy technology has been developed and suppressed for over a century and we need not be dependent on non-renewable energy for a moment longer, that the time is now for us to develop means of energy production and distribution that utilizes the inherent abundance of nature itself, that, as stated by the great scientist and inventor Nikola Tesla, Science is but a perversion of itself unless it has as its ultimate goal the betterment of humanity. That whenever any energy model has been perpetuated toward a system of control, limitation, and the stagnation of humanity's collective evolutionary progress, it is the right and duty of the peoples of all nations to abandon the outmoded technologies upon which such systems are built and transition toward those which are clean, renewable, and sustainable. We, therefore, the free people of Earth, in good conscience, assembled, appealing to the supreme order of nature for the rectitude of our intentions, do solemnly declare that in our lifetimes, through our continued dedication, ingenuity, and inspiration, we will bring to fruition a new and free energy paradigm, one in which empowering advancements and technologies are made widely available to all peoples in the service of human potential. And for the support of this Declaration of Energy Independence, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to, pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Those are some words I think we can all stand behind. Thanks for listening. Don't forget that you can use the coupon code OPA for 10% off on Amy's website, opabox.com. And you can also support my podcast over on Patreon with links to both of those in the episode description. Also, make sure and check out MetaWave, the musical talent that brought the groovy tunes to this episode. Thanks again. Can't wait to have Amy back on the podcast, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Much love. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.